We hope that your mesh highlighter is working. In this video, let's add some more textures to our shader, and we'll do that by using a subgraph. This is an asset that will help us reorganize the many nodes of the shader graph and break it into compartmentalized reusable parts. Currently, we have one 2D texture asset for the base color, essentially. We have that exposed as a property in the blackboard, and that plugs into the albedo channel of our PBR master. If you look at the original materials in the project and not the highlighted materials, you'll see that our lightweight pipeline standard shader has some texture slots for material properties beyond just the albedo. You might want to browse through the original materials just to familiarize yourself with them. You can see that we have all of these texture maps filled in for the metallic property, the normal map, and the occlusion map in most cases. Currently, our highlight shader graph only has this one base texture map, and we probably should plan on adding more. Now, you already know how to add extra texture nodes in the graph. We simply create a new texture 2D asset, connect that to a sample texture 2D node, and that will translate the texture map into RGB values that the PBR master can understand. So if you want to plug this in as a normal map, we would just connect the output of the sample texture 2D to the normal input. Now, once you expose this texture 2D asset as a public property in the Blackboard, you can attach a normal map in the inspector. Save the asset temporarily. We'll try it like this for now, and I'll show you a revised way of doing this in a little bit. All right, we have our shader graph saved, so let's examine a prop that has a pronounced normal map, something with a lot of surface detail that's sculpted into that map. The jigsaw prop is a good, obvious example. If you look, say, at the handle of the saw, it has little ridges painted in the normal map. When I switch to the highlighted version of the jigsaw with my mouse pointer, those ridges go away. You might not like the look of that, so you might want the highlighted version of the jigsaw to show those ridges in the handle as well. If you select the jigsaw highlight prop, and then you open up the drawer for the material in the inspector, you'll notice that our shader graph now has an open slot for our normal map. Select the Jigsaw Normal Map from the Project Assets. Enter Play Mode again. And now you'll note that the little ridges on our Jigsaw now appear in the highlighted assets as well. OK, good. So the artist who put this scene together created some nice maps for the albedo, the metallic, the normal map, and the occlusion map. If I wanted to, I certainly could go back to the highlight shader graph and then just add some more texture 2D asset nodes but remember, for each one, you also need a sample texture 2D node. And very quickly, our workspace would fill up with all these nodes. And that may be fine for a simple shader graph. But as your network of nodes gets more complex, we need to have some kind of utility to make navigating a large graph a little bit easier. Your work area can become very cluttered very quickly with nodes. And that's the main weakness of this visual interface. We can use an alternate structure called a subgraph to reduce the clutter and also make parts of the graph reusable in other shaders. So let's say I set a bunch of texture nodes for all these properties, the normal, the occlusion, etc. This is a common thing that we're going to do over and over again. So it would be handy if we could package up a bunch of these nodes and then save them as some generic structure that we could drop into any graph really easily. And that's what's called a subgraph. So think of it as a prefab that you can readily use in a new shader graph. All right, let's delete these nodes and clean up a little bit. We're going to make one self-contained set of nodes that's going to be reusable from shader to shader instead. So I'm going to highlight all of these and then just right-click Delete. Don't worry, we're going to replace all this stuff later. And we don't need this old color node either, so let's get rid of that. And we can delete any properties in the Blackboard that aren't being used. So let's just select those, right-click Delete. And we're just going to start fresh after we create this new subgraph. And don't worry, this is all less complicated than it sounds. In the project, let's create a new asset. And this time, instead of PBR graph, we're going to pick subgraph. And let's name this new asset PBR texture subgraph. An asset is created in the project. And note that it's a different icon than a regular shader graph. This subgraph will contain a bunch of texture 2D and sample texture nodes that we're going to use for the albedo, metallic, 
normal occlusion, and maybe the emission texture maps. And really just think of it as making a custom node that you can reuse. Like any other node, it will have inputs and outputs, and we'll be able to define those ourselves. Double click the PBR texture subgraph so we can edit it, and you'll get the shader graph window for this new asset, but it's a little bit different than the PBR graphs that we've seen up until this point. We still have a master preview and a Blackboard UI, but instead of a PBR master, we now have a rather simple node that is labeled subgraph outputs. And really that's all there is to it. A subgraph is a shader graph that doesn't have a PBR master node. Instead, it has a specially designated output node. Subgraphs aren't designed to be standalone. You're always gonna use them inside of another graph. So our outputs come from this one node. You simply click add slot to create more output ports, and you can pretty much have as many output ports as you need. Or you can always hit remove slot if you make too many. The blackboard, in the case of a subgraph, doesn't expose properties in the inspector. Instead, we're gonna use that to define the input ports. And this will be apparent once we go through it, so just bear with me. Let's bring this up so the subgraph will take four texture maps as inputs, and then output four RGB values. Hit add slot four times, and you'll see four ports get created, and they all take vector fours. This is what we're gonna output from the subgraph. We don't wanna enter RGB values manually. We wanna create some texture nodes instead. So make a texture 2D asset, create node, input, texture, 2D asset, and let's connect that to a sample texture 2D node as we've done before. Just drag this port into the work area. We'll get our create node menu pre-filtered and then find sample texture 2D. Let's connect the RGB output to the first port of the subgraph outputs node. This will be used for our albedo texture map. So let's right click on the texture 2D asset, convert to property, and now we have this showing up in our blackboard. This is a subgraph, not a regular shader graph, so these blackboard properties will eventually just become input ports. Let's label the properties based on what we want the user to drop in here. And I'm gonna call this first one albedo. Again, this is just a label for the input port and nothing else really. And then we can just keep making more texture 2D assets and sample texture nodes to fill out the rest of the subgraph. And let's repeat this for the normal, metallic, and occlusion attributes. Now thus far, we've been creating the texture nodes and then applying the convert to property from the context menu. If you already know what property you want in the Blackboard, you can actually create the properties first and then drop the nodes in later. That's a different way of doing things, so let me show you that way as well. Click the plus icon in the Blackboard, create the texture 2D property first, and let's create texture properties for normal, metallic, and occlusion. So we're gonna have four different properties for each prop. And once we have those properties reserved in the Blackboard, you can drop them into the work area. Create node. Now we have a menu item for properties. And then inside, we can just select property normal. And then the same thing for the other properties. Create node, properties, property metallic. Create node, properties, property occlusion. All of these need sample texture 2D nodes. You can simply copy the first sample node and then just paste, paste, paste. And now we just connect the lines. Now we do have to be careful here. For the albedo and the normal, we can just use the RGBA port as we've been doing. But for the metallic and occlusion, those maps are grayscale and they tend to be only one channel. If you look at the project assets, you'll see that the maps for these material attributes have been combined into one TIFF file to save disk space. So if you look at the jigsaw metallic occlusion smoothness map, you'll see that it's a TIFF file, but the red channel is the metallic map, the green channel is the occlusion map, the alpha is the smoothness map, and the blue channel isn't really used at all. So you don't wanna blindly grab the RGBA port and stuff all of that into the outputs node. You need to hook up the correct channel. 
So it should be just as they're named. Again, that's metallic equals red, occlusion equals green, and smoothness, which we aren't using right now, is the alpha. So create your properties first, drag them into the work area, and then connect your texture nodes per usual. That's slightly different than how we created the nodes before, but it's an equally valid way of working. Try both ways and decide for yourself which workflow does it for you. No matter how you create them, the end result is the same, so Shader Graph doesn't care. Make sure that you hit Save Asset to save your subgraph to disk, or else you'll lose your work, and then let's move on to the challenge. Okay, we've set up and saved our first subgraph asset. Let's hop over to the original highlight shader graph and see if you can figure out how to drop your new subgraph into here as an extra node. Remember, you wanna think of it as a prefab for shader graph. Now, after you drop in the subgraph, you'll want to create some properties on the blackboard. And finally, you'll connect everything together to make your shader functional again. Try one game object like the jigsaw and fill out its correct textures in the inspector, and then test it out in play mode to see how different your highlighted game object looks. All right, go ahead and attempt that on your own. Pause the video and resume playback if you get stuck or if you complete the challenge. Welcome back. So here's the state of our project after we've just created the subgraph, the game objects highlight, but we've removed all of the texture nodes that we added to go to the highlight shader graph. So each highlight material has the rim color and rim power intact, but the base color is just default gray. And that's okay, we've taken a step backwards so we can take two steps forward. Let's edit the highlight shader graph, and I'll frame up and use the subgraph in here to restore our textures. And we're gonna add the subgraph to the work area just like any other node. Create node. And currently, in this version of the beta, it's tucked away in a blank menu. In some versions of Unity, I think this should properly say subgraphs. But if you don't see it, just remember you can always use the filter, or if you do look through the menus, you should eventually find the subgraph asset PBR texture subgraph that we just created. So let's drop that into the work area. We have a new node that has four inputs labeled albedo, normal, metallic, and occlusion taken straight from the blackboard. And the subgraph automatically converts these T2 texture inputs into vector fours. And you want to treat this like any other node in our graph. You can connect the vector four outputs into the PBR master. Just drag each output to the corresponding port in the master node. And now we need to expose some things in the blackboard for the user to select the texture maps. And though it may seem a little redundant, we actually need to create four more properties in this blackboard. So let's create four texture 2D properties. And the names will correspond with the same names that we used in the subgraph. Albedo, normal, metallic, and occlusion. And this should all be boilerplate stuff at this point. Just create some texture 2D properties. And again, you'll just use the same exact names. Albedo, normal, metallic, and occlusion. And that got cut off. Let me rename that properly. Occlusion. And now let's create nodes for these four properties. Create node, properties, property albedo. Create node, properties, property normal. Create node, properties, property metallic. And create node, properties, property occlusion. Hook those up to the correct ports. Now we should save our asset. Our shader graph should be ready to accept textures again. By using a subgraph, we reduced a lot of the visual clutter of the main shader graph. All of the extra sample texture nodes, for example, are hidden inside of our subgraph. We've introduced a level of organization just to keep our workspace a bit more manageable. So let's go back to the editor, and now we can test our highlight shader graph again. Now, because we wrecked a lot of the shader's blackboard properties, unfortunately, we do need to set up all of our highlight materials. So let's select the jigsaw highlight matte material, for example, and we'll fill in our texture slots for the albedo, 
the normal, the metallic, and the occlusion. Browse for each one in the file browser, and usually you can just figure out which goes where based on the name. And note, because the same texture stands in for the metallic and the occlusion properties, we do end up selecting the same map, and that's this combined occlusion metallic smoothness texture that we're using. Now remember that in our subgraph, we were clever and only grabbed the appropriate color channel as needed. All right, so now our inspector is filled out. Let's go back to play mode. And when I hover the mouse over the jigsaw, the highlighted jigsaw has textures and we can see the extra detail of the normal map rendered in the handle. The other maps are there, they're just a little more subtle. Now one more thing I can show you about subgraphs is that you can create them from within the shader graph window as well. You may remember that we made our current subgraph asset from the project window. If you have a shader graph already open, you have the option of generating a subgraph right from here. So let's say we like this combination of the Fresnel effect node with the multiply node, and we find that we're gonna use it a lot. Select those nodes that you wanna reuse, and then right click, convert to subgraph. It gives you a prompt. We need to save our subgraph as an asset to disk, and I'll call this Fresnel multiply subgraph. Now when I do that, you'll see that Unity turns our old nodes into a single subgraph. It saves the subgraph asset to disk and then automatically connects the subgraph and generates the appropriate properties as needed. If you want to edit the subgraph, all you need to do is double click the subgraph node and that pops open a separate shader graph window. Notice that our blackboard automatically gets the rim power and rim color properties carried over. So that saves us a lot of bookkeeping. And if you wanna make changes, go ahead and tweak anything that you want in here. Just remember to save your subgraph when you're done in order for those changes to take effect. And really that's subgraphs in a nutshell. But at this point, you should have a good idea on how the shader graph works and have a basic overview of the workflow. The best way to continue learning about shader graph is just to go through examples and explore some shading effects that you can create with the other nodes. And there are literally dozens of nodes that we haven't explored yet. We've really only scratched the surface over the last few videos, and you can do tons of stuff with these shaders. We'll have periodic updates where we show you some more nodes and shader graph. Until then, feel free to go to the Q&A forum from the dashboard and post a new topic. We would love to hear what shading effects that you're interested in. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Until next time.